you can use this framework, maybe just changing the first step, the first step, because you have different notions of connectivity. For example, here, Spielman uses effective resistance. You could use your own concept of connectivity. And then you have some randomization. Uh, and uh, so you can use this framework for, for many algorithms as it is done uh, by many, many authors. So the resulting graph is epsilon spectral sparsifier with high probability. An expectation of the weights in the random matrix is exactly weights of the original matrix. So we just apply the concentration theorems. And just, uh, so let's carry on and uh, show you some uh, sparsifier for faster design of sparsifier and uh, expanders uh, via, via random spanning trees is a is an interesting article by Goyal, Rademacher, and Vempala in two thousand eight, and their speculation is that uh, random spanning trees gives a sparsifier. And so we have input a graph, and the output is a weighted subgraph, vertices V, edges F, and it is weighted, but it is a subgraph. So, so the goal, the goal is to delta G of U minus delta H of U. This is less than equal to epsilon delta G of U. And this is correct for any U. And we want to preserve cuts only. As I said, when you summarize a billion nodes edges to some other subgraph of that, uh, of that graph, you can you can preserve something. For example, here we preserve the cut only. There are many different measures. And the cardinality of F here is order of n log n over epsilon two. For historical reasons, we want small uh, cardinality of F and the running time is O tilde m over epsilon 2. And then when they say sampling in their articles, it means that we construct edge by sampling every edge with probability uh, with probability 100 log of n. And so we give each edge the weight 1 over p. So what are the properties of this edge? First of all, the number of sampled edges, sampled edges are order of n log n, and the cuts are preserved. Delta G of U delta h of u, and for any u. So cuts are preserved. And so let me give you a, just a proof sketch. We consider any cut delta g of u with the cardinality is equal to k, then delta g of u is greater than kn over 2. Uh, so we let uh, x of e, x of that edge, to be, co uh, to be 1 if e is sampled. So if it is sampled, it is 1. And then uh, because uh, we are sampling, so we have a very interesting random variable. This is a trick that we use 
almost every time because we want to use churn of bound and churn of bound uses a sum of some random variables. So this is equal to delta h of u. And then uh, you calculate the expectation of this interesting random variable, uh, which is p times delta u, which is greater than 50k log n. And we say that a cut fails if x minus mu is greater than mu over 2. And now we are ready to use churn of bound, as I promised, because we have such an interesting variable. So the probability that the cut fails is less than or equal to 2 e to the minus mu over 12 is less than or equal to n to the minus 4k. Let me recall what is churn of bound because some of you don't know. If you have a sum of some independent Bernoulli, for example, xi i from 1 to n, the probability that this interesting random variable is greater than 1 plus delta mean of that is less than e to the minus delta squared delta squared mu over 3. And you know that mu is expectation of that interesting variable, which is pn. And this uh, happens for any delta less than 1. So the number of cuts, the number of cuts with uh, u equal to k is n choose k. We have n vertices. We can choose k different uh, cuts. So this is the the answer. And so the probability that any cut fails, not just one of them, any cut, we can use the union bounds in probability theory and then we just sum over all of them, which is bounded by n to the minus 3k. And from here is just simple math. So with high probability, every u has delta h of u minus p delta u less than p delta, and, and we get the answer. So let's, uh, let me show you how to generalize to more general, more to arbitrary g not just uh, simple graphs. So we have a click here, we have another click here. We want uh, to keep this, because if you delete that, then they are not connected anymore. So we can't sample all edges with the same probability, and that's the idea, because now we can sample low connectivity edges with high probability, and sample high connectivity edges with low probability. So the framework, the general framework is this. For i from 1 to rho for each edge, this algorithm is for many, many papers. So it's a framework because the probability is abstract. P of V could be anything. It depends on your measure. For example, Schmielmann likes his effective resistance concept. So for her, for him, uh, that is a different thing. For a, for me, P of E could be different thing. So add E to F and increase the weight of that edge by just one over rho p of e and the claim 
The claim is edge perfectly approximates G in expectation. So for any E, for any edge, the expectation of the weights is one. And for every uh, subset of V, the expectation of the weights of the, of the cut is just, so in expectation, the cuts are equal. And the goal is that every Delta H of U is tightly concentrated. So I repeat the seminal work of Benzur and Carger for several time that if you just set rho equal to O log N, and P of E equal to 1 over, for example, strength of edge E, similar to edge connectivity, uh, or uh, even many different measures, then all cuts are preserved. And the sum over all these probabilities is less than n and this implies that the cardinality of f is order of n log n and the runtime is order of m log 3n for for Schmid, for spielman the runtime is order of m log uh, 50 and of course Miller could prove that uh, you can reduce this 50 to 3 using matrix churn of bound and uh, you know this edge connectivity comes from the article of Harvey in 2010 and their running time is order of m log 2n which is a little bit improvement so what Harvey wants to show to everybody that edge connectivity is at least a maximum of either strength, either effective conductance, effective conductance. And uh, and it is related to random spanning trees, which we don't have to talk about them. Uh, okay, so now I want to start a very, very important problem, which is called ST mean cut. Uh, we can solve it in polynomial time. And the input is an undirected graph with, for example, you have a source, S stands for source, T stands for sink or target. And then uh, here is an example for you. So we have some uh, costs associated for each edge. And here is my example. And here is your target. Some people say sync, some people say target. They are the same thing. And here, seven, six, three, four. Okay, so we want to minimize total cost of cut edges and identify minimum ST cut. So this is this is a cut for five plus one is equal to six and you cannot find a better one. 
so and lower uh, some of edges, some of weights. So we cannot find. So this is the va So we say that the value of mean st cut is six. Uh, because in approximation, we just want to f make it an, ap uh, an optimization problem and any, any optimization problem has a value. And we want to reduce uh, the minimum ST cut. So uh, first of all, you should know that in any uh, linear programming, uh, for example, you have some objective, it is going in this way, and uh, your, your answers, your solutions are at the extreme points, like this. For example, if it goes here, you get these extreme points. And uh, in order to formulate this mean ST mean cut problem, we need to define some variables that uh, mimics the, the problem. For example, here we just need to define XE variable and DV. XE variable for edges. So for any edge, we define variable XE. For any vertex, we define variable dv. And uh, we define it, we say that it is equal to 1 if e is getting cut. If, it is, if e is not cut, we say e x e is, to, is equal to 0. Same for the vertex variable. We say that if uh, the uh, vertex is equal to 0, it means that V is on source side. If the uh, V is equal to 1, we say that V is on sink side. So for vertex vertices, we have these variables. For edges, we have we have this variable. And uh, and we have two constraints to solve that problem. The first constraint is that d of s equal to zero. It means that let s to be on the source side of the cut and d of t equal to one. It means that let t be on the sink side of the, sort, of the cut. So this is a constraint one. The second constraint is that x of v e so it, this, this really mimics the problem. X of E is greater than D of U minus D of V. X of E is greater than D of, flip it, D of V minus D of U. So in other words, X of E is greater than absolute value of D U minus D V. So using constraint two and one, uh, we can minimize this optimization problem. C of E, cost of edge E, and your uh, variable for edge X of E, which I have defined here. So if we minimize this, then your ST cut problem is solved. But the fact, the fact, is that we can solve LP in polynomial time. And uh, uh, of course we use uh, Python libraries. So, so we look at the LP as just a black box. We don't know, we don't care about your simplex algorithm, any algorithm that that Python library uses. So uh, I want to say that a very important claim that optimal solution is integral. Optimal solution is integral. By integral, I mean it, it, it doesn't have a decimal, so it is integer. So I mean 
this is integer. So this optimization problem is the optimal solution is integral and it has a very, very big proof. So uh, you may not like that because it's a very long